China and Russia's energy alliance has been essential to their recent trade and economic cooperation. The global energy market has been significantly impacted by their combined activities in the oil and gas industry. China has emerged as one of the main buyers of Russian gas and oil as a result of this growing partnership. Additionally, for a time now, the two states' primary area of collaboration has been the energy industry. It has been extensive and beneficial. The Russia-China joint statement from 1996 served as the starting point for the collaboration. The partnership started with gas and oil and has now expanded to encompass nuclear and coal. According to Alexander Novak's article in the Energy Policy Journal, Russia must spend up to $67 billion to construct the Far Eastern and Power of Siberia II pipelines. Moreover, $27 billion would be required by adjacent industries like chemicals, cement, and metallurgy. Novak underlined that since Russia lost its European markets, it is imperative that it diversify its export structures. 49% of Russia's gas exports came from European markets prior to the invasion by the Ukrainians. In 2023, Russian exports to China via the 3,968-kilometer power of Siberia 1 pipeline rose by 48%. Over the course of the year, the total volume of gas reached a new record of 15.4 billion cubic meters. By 2030, Gazprom, the state energy firm of Russia, intends to transport up to 50 billion cubic meters of gas over the 2,600-kilometer Siberia 2 pipeline. This demonstrates unequivocally that China and Russia are strengthening their energy alliance. The Far Eastern Line's development is still in its infancy. Gazprom and China National Petroleum Corporation signed a contract in February of last year. Additionally, the two countries decided on a draft intergovernmental agreement at the end of January. A provision permitting payments to be made in yuan and rubles is included in this draft. Gas from the Krasnoyarsk and Irkutsk districts will be transported to Mongolia by power of Siberia too. The Sakhalin Islands, which are situated directly north of Japan, will serve as the starting point for the Far Eastern route. China is a major importer of energy from Russia, which supplies them with the majority of their energy and crude oil. Gazprom has disclosed intentions to use the power of Siberia pipeline to send natural gas to China on a daily basis in 2024, breaking the previous record. This is because, as of January 1, their daily export volume has exceeded the 2024 agreement's requirements. China and Russia's cooperation in the oil and gas sector has important political ramifications in addition to economic ones, especially in light of the sanctions imposed by the West. This demonstrates the close relationship between the two nations, which is focused on cooperating for their mutual benefit. Since their collaboration has been so successful, other states want to adopt a similar cooperative strategy. It's no secret that Beijing and Moscow are collaborating to increase their energy cooperation. According to recent data from China's General Administration of Customs, Russia increased its liquefied natural gas exports to China by 43.9% in 2023. With 8.3% extra oil, this comes to 86.25 million tons, or 6.5 million tons. This means that from the beginning of 2023, there has been a 10% growth in physical terms and a 64% increase in monetary terms. It appears that the collaboration is benefiting both nations. Xi Jinping underlined that China-Russian energy cooperation is essential to their working relationship and a potent weapon in ensuring the security of the world's energy supply. Furthermore, the oil industry is highly valued in Sino-Russian energy cooperation. The CEO of Rosneft, Igor Sechin, disclosed that Russian oil exports to China increased by 9.5% between January and October 2023, amounting to around 72 million tons, or 1.7 million barrels per day. Additionally, Rosneft is working on the Vostok oil project, which seeks to produce 115 million tons of oil annually by 2034, in response to the growing demand for oil in Asia. In order to reduce delivery times and costs, the project will also use Russia's Arctic waters to transport oil via the Northern Sea Route. A contract was struck by CNPC and Rosneft Oil for more than just the oil project. Additionally, they decided that through Kazakhstan, Russia would continue to supply China with 100 million tons of crude oil every 10 years. More than 300 million tons of crude oil and 15 cubic meters of natural gas have already been imported by CNPC via the pipeline from Russia since January. 2019 saw an expansion of Rosneft and ChemChina's collaboration in the petrochemical sector. This is a wise step to lessen their reliance on other countries as it helps both countries diversify their energy sources. For them, it's a win-win scenario. China and Russia have the most substantial collaboration in the energy sector, according to Lin Bokiang, head of Xiamen University's China Center for Energy Economics Research. This is a result of the two nations' notable similarities in the oil and gas sector. Increasing in the gas sector, Sino-Russian energy cooperation appears promising. 
The pipeline was approved by the leaders of both nations as a strategic initiative enhancing their alliance. The value of pipeline gas shipments from Russia to China from January to November 2023 increased by 177% over the same period the previous year. China receives gas supplies from Russia via LNG and the power of Siberia pipeline. The Deputy Prime Minister of Russia emphasized that they are moving forward in all directions and that shifts in the market won't affect their energy cooperation. Recently, Gazprom also revealed the signing of a new, long-term agreement to supply China with natural gas. It has a $400 billion market value and a 30-year lifespan. Every year, 38 billion cubic meters of natural gas will be sent to China. This agreement demonstrates the strong ties that exist between the two nations and the success of their cooperation. A contract to buy and exchange gas from Russia's Far East has been inked by China's National Petroleum Corporation and Russia's Gazprom. This collaboration has yielded yet another noteworthy accomplishment in the area of gas trade cooperation. In addition, work is also being done on the Yangtze River Underwater Crossing Project. This crucial project is located in the southern section of the 10,226-kilometer China-Russia Eastern Gas Pipeline. It's interesting to note that this tunnel will span the Yangtze River the longest. China now purchases a negligible quantity of LNG from Russia. However, as pipeline projects may match LNG supplies in the future, things could change. It's interesting to note that whereas the supply of oil has increased by 10% and 50%, respectively, the supply of LNG has expanded by 39% in volume and 150% in value. China might get as much LNG as they do through pipelines, according to Sechin, the CEO of the Russian oil company Rosneft. Additionally, China and Russia intend to collaborate on the development of energy-related equipment. Furthermore, Moscow is hoping that Chinese partners will assist in building an LNG facility in the Leningrad region's Ust-Luga area. China and Russia are investing together in the oil and gas sector. China has been investing more in Russian energy projects since 2014, when sanctions restricted Russian enterprises' access to Western financing. They already have stock in Arctic LNG-2 and Yamal LNG, both owned by Novatech. However, Russia has made a $55 billion investment in a pipeline agreement with China. An important development in the energy market is the cooperation between China and Russia in the oil and gas industry. Both nations have benefited from the relationship, which has established a model for international cooperation. Furthermore, Beijing and Moscow are making a big move in the direction of a more stable and sustainable international energy system. The energy cooperation between China and Russia has been expanding, and they have started a number of pipeline projects for gas and oil. As China's need for Russian gas and oil increases, so will this relationship. Furthermore, there may be opportunities for cooperation in the fields of renewable energy and other sectors. What are your thoughts on Russia and China's collaboration in the oil and gas industry? Let me know down below. If you want to continue to learn about business investing and financial education, we have got this video waiting on the screen for you to check out. Don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe for more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.